and welcome to another episode of Coffee with Nikki, a five minute chat. This week I had a conversation that reminded me of a pivotal moment that happened in my life over ten years ago. Way back when I was a employee with the motor vehicle department. Yes, I'm one of those dreaded people that you all talk about. I met people at that job during the worst times in their life, from license revocations due to alcohol or drug abuse, or just plain old loss. On this particular day, the number pulled brought a senior adult to my window, a man. While I pulled up his information on the computer and examined his documents, he told me his story. You see, he lost his wife that he'd been married to for over 50 years to death. He was a truck driver, which brought him out of town a lot on extended um, days. And at that time when we were talking, he was still a truck driver. His greatest regret was not spending enough time with his wife. There was so much sorrow in his eyes. We talked about how his wife was a believer. She loved to read her Bible, but he wasn't a believer. I think at best he was probably an agnostic. I asked if I could pray with him. He said yes. And we prayed for a couple of minutes. I asked if he wanted to go to church with my husband and I, and he said, I don't have anything nice to wear. He, like many other blue collar workers in Northern Arizona, are mostly lower middle class. Chino Valley, in fact, in fact makes no more than 22,000 a year. At that time, I went to a church service that was quite formal. Suits, ties, dresses, and nice slacks. I spent Sundays in a weekly wrestling match with my pantyhose, throwing wrinkled shirts in the dryer with a damp towel, because I don't believe in ironing, and making sure I looked really nice for church. This man made me realize that my clothes were a stumbling block to some. I also realized I wasn't dressing nice to honor God, but to please people. I felt it was a dress code. Some people do dress nice to honor God, and that's okay. This is, this is not putting it down. It just doesn't work for a lot of people. I am reminded, though, of Romans 14. It talks about judging people. In verses 13 to 15 specifically, So stop judging each other. Instead, this is what you should decide. Never put a stumbling block or obstacle in the way of your brother and sister. I know and I'm convinced in the Lord Jesus that nothing is wrong in to eat in itself. But if someone thinks something is wrong to eat, and it, it becomes wrong for that person. If your brother or sister is upset by your food, you are no longer walking in love. Don't let your food destroy someone for whom Christ died. And don't let something you consider to be good be criticized as wrong. God's kingdom isn't about eating food and drinking, but about righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Whoever serves Christ this way pleases God and gets human approval. Now I found this commentary in the Blue Letter Bible online. There is a lot of useless, harmful division among Christians, the Blue Letter Bible says, over silly, bigoted things. Paul isn't telling these Christians to erase their differences. He tells them to rise above them as Christian brothers and sisters. So, the following Sunday, I showed up in jeans and a nice shirt. Since that time, I mostly wear jeans to church because of that man. He has always been in my prayers since that day and in my thoughts. Even now I wonder how he's doing. I want to be approachable. And now, in this age of social media, I would have given him my card so we could continue that conversation. It would have had my phone, email, and social media handles. If I were concerned about privacy or security, I would open a free Yahoo or Gmail account to receive those emails and have that email listed. If the person were younger, I would have a public Instagram account to also keep in contact. Maybe if I had recognized those options early on, I would have been more prepared to handle who God sent my way that day. 
My years there at Motor Vehicle Department have taught me the workplace is just a sacred place to serve as the mission field. But then that's why we work well together. Missionary, pastor, worker. There's no other way to share the gospel really as a church. And these days, we need to share the gospel via relationship, aka social media. Building trust first before we have the right to share truth. I will see you next Saturday. Have a great day. I'm going to go get some more coffee.